This is Minda Wilson. Welcome to Urgent Care. Today, I'm excited to introduce you to Dr. Gary Epler. He is a Harvard Medical School educated doctor who's written a really interesting book called Alive with Life. And I'm welcome to the show. It's great to be here today. I was really fascinated by what you've written. And one of the key questions that came out of it to me was, people know they should be doing the things you say, but how do you really get people incentivized and motivated? Absolutely. Everybody knows what you need to do, the the nutrition, the sleep, the exercise. Uh, And and the the best way to do it, to get started and to really do it, is to think in in terms of the positive effects, the end results, uh, not the problems. And and a typical example is is running, is, is, uh, is exercise. Mm-hmm. We, we need to do an, an hour a day. Uh, you mix it up. You can do some running. You can do treadmill. Uh, do some yoga exercises, stretches, and and some weights. Uh, and do classes. You really do that. That's what I do. My wife does. And and everybody knows you really need to do it. The results are phenomenal. Gives you a ton of energy. Decreases stress. And it, and it even gives you some creativity. But why why people don't do it? Well, here's the reason. <laughs> You talk yourself out of it. People say, "Oh, geez, I got to get, I got to get exercise clothes. Uh, I've got to get up in the morning uh, and, and, and do it. Uh, I, I'm too busy. I have to work. I have to take care of the kids. I gotta, uh, I've got to uh, do this, do this, do that. Exercise, you know, one excuse after another, and they're all negative excuses. And the way you do it is, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, stop." Walk, go out, open the door, go outside and take a walk, 12 minutes. And just ask yourself, well, do I feel better? You will. Mm-hmm. You'll absolutely feel better. No matter what mm-hmm. happens, you'll feel better. That's what you need to think about. So when you're exercising, when you're thinking about going to exercise, think about that feeling, that positive feeling, and not all those problems that millions of people have. It sounds like you, you're saying start with a small change. That, you know, by doing something small and feeling yep. good, then maybe you'll make a bigger change. That's the whole thing. It's like the, the nutrition's the same. You know, it, my, my, my whole thing about nutrition, diets, diets, diets are bad. <laughs> they cause more weight gain than anything in the United States uh, because they all work for a few weeks or something. But three years later, people gain another 10 pounds, even worse than what they had. Mm-hmm. I, I, I did what's called a nutrition lifestyle. And that mm. means... You eat the right foods at the right time in the right amount, prepared in a healthy manner. And that, that kind of means no added sugar, no added salt, and none of this processed omega-6. And in and, and doing that, uh, you, you have to start somewhere. And, right. and, just, and you just start. Mm-hmm. Uh, try just say, well, let's start with this. Let's not have any table sugar on the, on the table. Uh, let's, let's not have any table salt. You don't need salt, added salt. It, it, it's there for a preservative. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's it's oh, not there to taste, and, and, and you don't need it. And sugar, oh, added sugar, we get plenty of sugar everywhere. It's in all foods, and, and, and you don't need the added part. So start there and just keep working up. So, you know, and there's ways to make things meet your taste buds. You know, if you're used to eating a certain way, maybe you can find something else that's exciting. And also, as you age, your what you what you like changes, too. It does. And not only that, if, you, if we stop using the added salt, the added sugar, we've been conditioned. Our parents, their parents, their parents, I mean, for thousands of years, we've been conditioned to eat this stuff. But if you stop doing it, for example, added salt... You can tell the difference between cauliflower and carrots and tomatoes. They all have these phenomenal tastes, and, and you develop new tastes and, and, and new things you like. My <laughs> so, dad, my dad had high blood pressure, and he 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 loved he loved his salt, but yep. um, he, he started using pepper. That's right. That's right. Yep, and it works. It works. And the thing with sodium salt, they added sodium salt, if you counter it with potassium salt, you know, you read a label with crackers or something like that, and it says 
350 milligrams of sodium, that, that's way too many. You want maybe five or 10. But if this potassium is high, it'll neutralize it. So that's sort of a little trick uh, that helps with the sodium salt. Well, see, that, and there's something that people can do to start sort of moving towards that healthier life that you were talking about. Sometimes people try to get healthy and they try to do it all at once. What are some of the mistakes they make that would incentivize them to do it in a more gradual way? You said the biggest mistake. That's right there. Uh, uh, people, as we just talked about, it's actually a corollary of what we've been talking about is people, the biggest mistake they make is all these negative excuses instead of this little, little positive thing that happens eating the right food, uh, walk, going for that walk, and, and eight hours of sleep. You have to have eight hours of sleep, not six and not ten. You need eight. And, and, you, and you just start with what it feels like for having eight hours of sleep three or four nights in a row. Whoa. I mean, there's no comparison to if you have three or four nights of six hours of sleep. I mean, it's just it's a ton of energy, you've creativity, and you're not cranky and grumpy. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. So, again, it's the same thing. It's, Looking at the positive results, thinking about those end results uh, rather than all the, uh, the complaints and the problems. So a person goes to their doctor and they're, they're thinking about changing their lifestyle and they're worried about things like maybe having a stroke or they're getting back some of the blood tests that say maybe they have high cholesterol or, or they have high blood pressure. What do they need to know about their blood tests that could make them more aware and, you know, have a healthier life? Yeah, I, I, I talked to a radio station in San Diego asked me mm -hmm. this question about blood tests. And they said, what, what do normal blood tests tell you? Mm -hmm. and what do normal blood tests tell you? And, and the issue there... Uh, is that you go to the doctor, the people are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever they're, they're in, and, and all the tests are normal, but they have high blood pressure, they have, they're overweight, they don't exercise, they don't get sleep, they have a, a poor nutrition habits, and they feel good. They say, oh, look, all my tests are normal. Well, that, that's not normal at all. I mean, the tests don't reflect that at all. Ten years from now, those tests are going to be off the charts. And not only that, their, their life expectancy is going to be shortened. Uh, and so in that sense, normal tests can be deceiving. It's the lifestyle that counts. Um, and, and then, of course, uh, if they are abnormal, uh, the, the first thing to do is to find out uh, if, if, uh, how abnormal they are. And if it's just a, an error or a mistake, so you need to have them repeated. Um, and then reflect on your lifestyle. <laughs> you can use them for monitoring in that case. You well, would fix things up a little bit and go back and check and, hey, this is starting to improve. I'll keep doing my, my positive uh, health habits. You look like a guy like Luke Perry who was young and healthy, exercised, had access yeah. to all the best care, and, and he has a stroke. I mean, how, how could you predict that? What, what? That, that? That is not predictable to some extent, and it depends on the stroke. It turns out there's three kinds of strokes. One of them is an aneurysm. That just means that aneurysm means that the blood vessel, the artery, has a wall that's thin. It's like an inner tube, and it just it pops, and boy, that's that. Mm -hmm. That blood goes into the brain, and, and if it's too much, that's the end of it. Uh, but if you catch it in time, you can fix it. Uh, and so that's one type, and you can't predict that unless it tends to run in families, so it's worth maybe uh, checking it out in that case, but that's extremely rare. So that's an aneurysm, but the second one is from high blood pressure. And high blood pressure literally is just too much pressure, and it just causes bleeding into the brain. Mm. And that one, uh, prevention uh, is, is about all you can do except uh, and, and keep the blood pressure uh, normal and, and do all these life uh, habits we've talked about. Uh, but the thing about that one is if a stroke does occur, you have to get very, very intensive physical therapy for three weeks 
This is very intense. Three times a day for an hour or three times a day. It's very painful. It's very vigorous. But it will turn people from uh, a totally dependent life in a wheelchair to, uh, to living an independent life. They, they may not be able to run marathons, but they can live an independent life. And it makes a huge, huge difference. So for that type of stroke, very important to get those three weeks of very intense rehab. The third one is a blood clot. And blood clots usually occur from what's called atrial fibrillation, which means the atrium of the heart, the top part of the heart, is, is quivering. It's not beating. Blood pools in there, makes a clot, and shoots right up to the brain. That one, if that happens, Get the person to the emergency room instantly, as fast as you can, call 911, because we have a medication that can dissolve the clot if you get there in time within, the, within a, a couple of few hours. And, and so that's the story uh, with uh, Luke Perry uh, and his uh, stroke. But how, how do you know? Is there some kind of physical sensation that you feel if your heart is quivering? Or, I mean, is there something that, that would tell you that that's happening? The, the symptoms of, of a stroke, if you're sitting in a restaurant or you're with your family or, or a friend or something, and the first one that happens is uh, the, sort of a stare in their face, their eyes will kind of glass over for just instant, and, and they'll start to slur the speech. We get to the slur, <laughs> slurring of the speech, and their lips may droop on one side or the other, and then if it's more severe, the action will become weak in one side or the other. And if that happens, just, just, just call 911. Uh, you may uh, overreact, but it's worth it, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, because there's a thing called TIA, which is transient ischemic attack, and that's a baby stroke that goes away in, in 60 seconds. Uh, but it, it, if you overshoot it, well, you just apologize. But it's worth calling 911 just in case it's the real thing. Wow. So it seems that the key indicators that you're saying are to be self-aware, be, be aware of your body, and then make small changes towards living a healthy lifestyle. And that's really the way that you can sort of move yourself forward. I've developed uh, over the years of research uh, all over the world uh, a new philosophy. Uh, I call it, it's called a health philosophy, uh, a Balerian philosophy, but it's a new health philosophy. It's based on new modern brain science. And there are seven words that can change people's lives. It is know who you are moment by moment. And that means brain regions, you want to stay in the good ones, and you want to get out of the bad ones. You want to get out of the bad ones fast. Uh, and that's what the new brain science has told us. And you're only in one brain region at one given moment. And all the rest are offline. For example, you want to go into the prefrontal cortex. That's the one that makes decisions best for us and for everybody else. You want to go into the creativity center. You want to go into the positive relationship center. These are all separate parts of the brain. And the one that we all like is the pleasure center. That's called the accumbens. And, and it's wonderful to go there. But you have to be careful about the accumbens. You want to go there with naturally occurring positive events. Maybe you have lunch with your wife, or husband, or something, but not there with sugar, alcohol, or drugs, because that's the addiction center. Mm. So that's the bad, one of those bad regions you don't want to get into. But the really bad ones, and this is where we just, you just mentioned, know who you are, know yourself, is you've got to stay out of these bad ones, and there's two of them, the amygdala anger center. And that's literally what it is. It's just when, when you're, it, it, it can save your life in a, in a real life threatening situation. I don't know accident or something two or three times in your whole life it's ever used. The rest of the time, three times a day, we're going to get, something's going to happen to us. Somebody will yell at us, they'll insult us, they'll cut us off. It's just going to happen. You don't want to go in there for very long, for just seconds. 
and people can spend hours in that anger center because, as I said, only one's in charge at any given moment. People can spend hours, months, a whole lifetime in this anger center. I mean, whoa, you've got to get out of there. And I, there's, there's lots of ways of getting out and get out there in a few seconds. And then the other one, the new one, is called the cingulate, and that's in the back of the brain. That, that amygdala is a, a crocodile brain. It's only on instincts. And, and the, 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 the one up a little bit better is called the cingulate, and whenever you're thinking about yourself, that's where you're thinking from. You're not thinking from your prefrontal cortex or creativity. You're thinking from this singular region. And that's the self-destructive one, the self-pity one. It's the self-important one, this grandiose one. And the worst thing, it's this Machiavellian kind of thinking that you'll do anything to anybody to get ahead for yourself. So it's all self-centered thinking. Mm. You've got to get out of there. You never want to be in there. <laughs> mm. and, and, and it's real easy to get out of that one. Uh, number one, if you're sort of beating yourself up, oh, God, you made a mistake. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm stupid. I don't do this. What? How the, my life is ruined. I screwed up, whatever it is. First thing you've got to do is turn that around. You've got to do the opposite. You, 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 you're beating yourself up. Be kind to yourself. Self-compassion. You think of being kind to yourself, boom, you get out of that. Get out of that place. You don't want to be there. And if you're in this self-important thing like, oh, I'm better than anybody else and, uh, and I'll do anything to kind of get ahead, uh, it, if that means you're taking things from people. You're taking their pride. You're taking their energy, taking their money. And do the opposite. Give. 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 Give your energy. Give your time. Give your help. And without expecting anything in return, that will mm-hmm. absolutely get you out of this singular and, and get you into that that prefrontal lobe cortex where you're starting to think about other people. So that's sort of a a concept of this philosophy of know who you are moment by moment, and so you can just, you do anything from there. You you want to be in that prefrontal cortex and start making good decisions. Absolutely. So how yeah. how do you get yourself there? You're you're, well, you're you're feeling confused. You don't know how to decide. If between... you're feeling confused and you're feeling this, you don't know what decision. You know where you are. You're in your singular, right? Right. That means you're in that place about self thinking, self you know whatever it is you're doing. And, and the way you get out of that is the opposite of what you're doing. It, as I said, if you're, uh, if you're beating yourself up or the self-pity, oh, gee, I feel uh, I'm the only one going through this, you do the opposite. You be kind to yourself. And that's how you get out of it. When you're kind to yourself, just be kind to yourself. Stop beating yourself up. You automatically, boom, you're, you're back into your free frontal cortex. So let's say I'm making an important life decision. I'm a college. I'm going to. I'm deciding which college I'm right. going to. And I, I'm sitting your there. Going, right. right, but I can't decide. I'm like, I've, I'm, I'm the luckiest person in the world, and Harvard right. and Yale right. and right. Berkeley have all accepted right. me. And right. I'm going, oh my God, I, I just miracle. can't decide <laughs> which, which. <laughs> Which which school should I go to? I can't make up my mind. You're not really, you're, you're not making your best decisions and you're feeling, you're having all these anxiety feelings. So what do you do to move yourself to that place where you're in the best decision making place for yourself and you're not in, you're not in that anxiety built place? Okay, well, the first thing is to make the decision about whether you're going to go to Yale or Harvard or Berkeley. Uh, he, there's all kinds of ways you can do that. You do the pros and the cons, you list all of that. But when you do that, it's a healthy thing you're doing. You're, you're trying to figure this out. You're using your prefrontal cortex. You're using that decision-making process. And that's fine. It's great. That's what you need to do. But if you throw the anxiety in it, the worry, the stress, 
oh, what if I make the wrong decision? What if I do that? The minute you go into that kind of thinking, you're no longer in your prefrontal cortex. And that, that, that's the whole point about knowing who you are moment by moment. You find yourself in that anxiety, that, oh, the, the fear. It's, it, 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 and here's how you get out of it. This is the amygdala. Uh, you're back in that amygdala, the instinctive place, that crocodile brain. I mean, it's useless for day-to-day -day things. And, and, and fear, worry, anxiety, and, and anger. They're all four of those. They're right there in that amygdala. And here's the way you get out of those things. For example, fear. You, the first thing about fear is you have to learn how you respond to fear. Uh, for me, uh, say, uh, geez, uh, uh, our water heater broke, it's 2000 bucks. Where am I going to get that $2,000? It's not in the bank. Oh, oh, I've got to get that. And if I've got to get it tonight. Well, uh, when I feel that way, that's fear to me. And it happens, I, it's in my belly, it's in my stomach. I get this feeling of, ugh. <laughs> And so the first thing you need to do is what are your physical, how do you respond to fear? If it's in your belly or you, you, you clench your eyes or whatever it is, feel that. And when it happens, this is exactly what you do. You repeat it. You feel that fear. You're trying to make that decision of, oh, God, what if I made a mistake? What if I go to this place and I, I should have done that? And, and, and you get this fear going. You can just feel it. Let it go. Let it feel it. Just feel the fear. Feel that thing in your belly. Feel whatever it is. Just feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Really feel it. Don't think of anything else for about eight to ten seconds. It just really feel it, and, and it'll go away. At the end of that eight to ten seconds, it'll go away. It'll absolutely stop, and you'll go back to thinking about trying to make the decision. And so recognizing time, what you're feeling, sitting there yeah. going, I'm feeling yeah. afraid. I feel it. You know, I'm I'm afraid. I'm feeling afraid. Feel I'm experiencing feel that afraid. fear. Exactly, and and it's like you're driving the car. Somebody cut you off. Just feel it, anger. <laughs> you're driving. Just feel it. Just feel your hands clenching, your eyes narrow. Just feel it for about eight five seconds. You don't have to do anything else, and it'll go away. You don't want to think think that second thought. You don't want to think, oh, that guy behind me or something, guy going, who does he think he is? And then you build a story, you say, oh, guy, he's going this, he's one of those. You don't want to build that story. You only want to think about the feeling of that anger for a few seconds, and it'll go away 100% of the time. And the science is absolutely, it's beautiful science. It's what happens when you go into the anger center, the fear center, worry, anxiety, any of those feelings the sympathetic system fires up, the, the adrenaline response. There's 20 different things. You, 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 your eyes narrow, your blood pressure goes up. You, you get all fired up. And, mm. and at the same time, there's a little stimulus, a little, uh, little trigger of the parasympathetic system, and that's called the calming system. Same time, they both go out to those two systems. The calming system doesn't do anything. It waits. It waits. Is this a life-threatening situation? Is this an automobile accident that you need your instincts, you need your amygdala? Or is it one of these three irritating things that's going to happen today? And when you do those eight seconds, ah, this isn't anything. This is not life-threatening. And it kicks in 100% of the time. The calming system will kick in. And it, it, absolutely phenomenal. And, and it really works. And it'll get you out of this problem of you, you're making a decision, you're using your prefrontal cortex. It's phenomenal. It's very powerful to make this decision. Harvard, Yale, Berkeley, and that's fine. Just keep using it. And all of a sudden, you go, oh, geez, what if I do this? And what happens if I do that? And oh, you get all worked up. Just keep feeling it. Feel it for those eight to ten seconds. It'll go away, and you get back to the business. It's a new yeah. discovery that I've made just in the past few months. I've been doing the research for years and years and years, and I've finally been able to put it all together, but it works. It works for me. Oh, my oh. God. How great. How relieving. It right? Is, it's amazing. It's, it's free. Amazing. Yeah, it is free. 
it gets you back where you need to be. <laughs> so and, yeah. and then and then it makes you once you feel it, you go through that experience, you feel that feeling. So you have the ability to focus on what you need to do, and uh, and get past the uh, the anxiety of something yeah. by experiencing the anxiety recognizing it and then moving towards the thing that you need to accomplish or decide. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better. Perfect. That's it. That's and just great. The corollary of all of this, in order to support this system, in order to support it to make it work well, especially the prefrontal cortex, it's very, very powerful, but it's sensitive. It requires eight hours of sleep because it runs on adenosine. And adenosine runs out during the day. If you only use six hours, you don't get enough adenosine for that, for that prefrontal lobe to work. And that amygdala loves no sleep. It, it doesn't want any sleep. It's instinct. <laughs> and, and, and it loves junk food. Right? But the prefrontal cortex, you have to feed it well. You have to have a healthy nutrition. have to do that hour of exercise. It's helpful to do uh, some uh, alpha brainwave meditation every day. Take care of that prefrontal lobe, and then you'll be able to use this concept of know who you are moment by moment. I'm very excited to learn about what you're discussing, and I really appreciate you coming on the show, and I hope you'll come back and, and see how this research is spreading and if people want to reach out to you and, and learn more about this, what's the best way for them to do it? Well, at the, the website's fine. I, I answer emails. It's Gary, just like it sounds, G-A-R-Y, Epler, E-P-L-E-R, dot com. And uh, that new book is probably my wife suggested a name moment by moment. It's just been a great pleasure talking to you, and I hope you will come back again. This is Minda Wilson for Urgent Care. We'll catch you next time.